Hey, I'm Ray back with another video. It's 11-24, July 6th, and I just completed some housework, and I'm like really happy. I got it all done, you know, and it's a beautiful day outside. I did have to step outside just one time, okay? I'm, I'm going to have to go back out one more time, but not to the store. Just, you know, do some um, errands or... Um, I'm not even leaving the, the, the property at my house. I'm just kind of taking care of certain things, you know. I'm cleaning up my house, and... I'm feeling pretty good about that. You know, I, I clean my house, you know, once a week, um, thoroughly, you know, as best I can. Um, I sweep if necessary, and then, you know, I mop, not as often as I should, you know, but um, I, I have to do that. I'd like to do that this weekend. Anyway, so, um, you know, this week, sometimes, you know, I get these thoughts in my head, and I don't know exactly why it's popping up in my head, or these um, urges to do certain things, you know. Like I mentioned before, you know, I'm not the kind of person who who um, feels like it, it's so necessary. I don't have to be so precise in certain things. Like when it came to when I got divorced, when it came to my driver's license, my social security card, I wanted to make sure that that was all changed, you know, because that's my identification, right? But things like you know my phone, you know, and I, I did, you know, when I first got divorced, you know, I I, I did call the phone company and talked about um, asking what I needed to do to change you know, my, my name on my account, but, um, you know, it was, it seemed like so much red tape and garbage, and my, my T-Mobile, where I, you know, I, I get my service, it, you know, it just, I really didn't want to go there, you know, I hate stores like that, right, um, it's not a bad store, you know, they're organized, the salespeople are professional and everything, it's just, I don't like cell phones, you know, I, I use them, and I appreciate them, but I'm not some of those people who just love gadgets. I want to be there. I want to be. I just don't. I, I, if I, when I go in for a cell phone, I'm like, okay, price pays a factor, right? And then I, I know, of course, I want my text messaging and all those little things. I find out what it is. Price is right. I'm not partial to any particular company. Just give me the damn replacement so I can get the fuck out of here. I don't want to deal <laughs> with all this stuff, right? So anyway, um, I had to go over there. So that was back in October and I just kind of put it off. Um, my insurance company, I felt the same way about that. I'm like, well, you know, whatever. I did call first, of course. That was one of the first things I did back in October. But I really didn't want to venture all the way over the other side of town just to handle it. I figured I'll take care of it eventually. But for the last few days, I kept thinking, I need to do this. I need to just get it off. Maybe it's my subconscious telling me, get the fuck away from these people and I want complete even though legally I've already done that, you know, I've gotten my divorce, I just don't want to be associated with anything relating to that name, right? This is some, these little things pop up, you know, from time to time, and it probably happens to you too. You probably just never noticed it uh, or paid attention, but you really should. Pay attention to that little inner voice in your head. I, I see value in that. So I was thinking, you know, um, because of this issue, I was thinking a lot about the Graham family. Um, like I said, I don't know them very well, but I'm starting to, you know, put things together, especially since, you know, I left him for that whole issue about him and his mom with some really weird stuff. Um, and then, of course, mainly, you know, you don't manipulate my employment. You do not do that and expect to be forgiven, okay? So the idea of me getting back together with, with, with Joel um, is just absurd. You know, that's like, no, okay? Um, I don't have any respect for people who, who live that kind of lifestyle, okay? The thing with... Polly, um, you know, I know she was a teenage girl. She ended up in a um, sanitarium for a while. She had tuberculosis. They did a story about her on, in, you know, on, in the newspaper. I won't say what newspaper. That's not relevant. But I'm sure you guys can figure it out. A few years ago, um, you know, and she, you know, she, um, to to people, and I, I wonder the value system of this community. I really do. Okay. But, you know, the way I see it, okay, I know that they have a little relationship going on. And I don't believe that that was something that um, just happened. Like, you know, one day they got, he got to a certain age, they looked into each other's eyes and realized they were soulmates or something. I personally think that she adopted him for this particular reason, okay? And, um, you know, I noticed certain things about Joel's personality that, um, you know, as I'm looking back, I see that he has this multiple personality. He has this switch, you know, like he can switch modes, you know, um, and they're usually from one extreme to the other. Like there's really no middle ground. Like we've talked about this before, but I'm starting to see more of that, you know. 
And some people, you know, like in, 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 in his mother's case, in his mother's case, now we have a woman who, you know, at the time of her youth, spent a little time in, in a sanatorium, and not long after that, she ended up getting married, okay? I don't believe her family ever had the um, ability to understand certain things. Like, you know, some people are ignorant, okay? Like, my family's ignorant in certain things, okay? My blood relations, okay? Um, and in her case, I think she's one of those people. Like, she doesn't know, you know, she might think, when she thinks of incest, she might think of people like maybe in, uh, what do you call that place, um, the Appalachians, and people who produce offspring with their kids. And so she might see them herself as different than them. Um, but maybe she knows full well of what she's doing. Whatever the case is, you know, um, I, I think she may be ignorant or e ignorant. And uh, I think she's evil, really. I do. I do think she's evil. But when it comes to that, you know, she may think it's not that big of a deal. Some people in their mind, they think, well, I'm providing a kid, you know, a home. Uh, they have a place to live. They're not I'm going to be in an orphanage. So I... But, you know, in exchange for, you know, sexual favors, they don't see anything wrong with this, okay? Now, what other people do is their own business. I personally don't think it should be done to children, okay? That's my thing, okay? It was consensual, fine, whatever. Um, but I do believe that, in, in the past I made uh, comments about Joel being a Manchurian candidate. Now, Manchurian candidate is really a person that's, you know, mostly relates to political people, okay? Like um, politicians, and they're used, like, as a as a puppet or mouthpiece, you know, for a particular enemy. Um, so it's not necessarily political, but what went on in this town kind of is political. You know, you're creating division, you know, about the race issue, creating the issue about the religion issue. So, you know, and, and Joel doesn't have any point of reference as to what's right or wrong if he was raised in a family that's ignorant and corrupt themselves, you know. So I noticed that, you know, when, when um, I first met Polly, um, she was basically saying and she said it in a very strange way like you know I, I never lie like why would you tell me something like that right it was I think she in her mind uses those little triggers and, and these little sayings just much like the movie okay now I know that movie was based on a um, it's it's not based on uh, it's, it's a fictitious movie okay but the idea of a Venturian candidate is really based on real facts okay maybe the movie was a little bit more dramatized but you can actually create altars in people, okay? And many people in society have these altars, okay? They have these little triggers, um, you know, like for example, certain commercials are designed in a way to advertise, to make people do certain things, to, to modify their behavior. Some people are have these uh, split personalities to where they do certain things and they don't see, you know, that there's contradictions in what they're doing. They just continue on. It's, it's a part of the programming, okay? I think that maybe she did it. She didn't realize it, but I think she programmed him. This man, this man, you know. Um, anyway, um, because he lies with great skill, he doesn't seem to have any sense or, or a right or wrong. He doesn't have a conscience, you know, and that's a great concern to me. Um, Manchurian candidates have. Um, they are able to have split personalities in a lot of ways, you know. And, you know, during certain times, they might be normal. But in this particular movie where this guy was triggered with a deck of cards, you know, specifically it was, I think, the Queen of Hearts, I think it was. Could have been Queen of Diamonds. I don't remember, you know, specifically. Um, and by the way, you know, I do like the original 1962 version more so than I did like the 19, the 2004 version. Even though Denzel Washington was in, no, I'm not partial to my race. The fact of the matter is when I look at the, um, you know, when I compare them, most reboots or, you know, um, revised versions of things usually aren't as good as the original, but the original was very good, okay? Um, and it really portrayed, you know, um, these, uh, what do you call it, slips or these, uh, these, uh, I don't know, these warps or whatever you want to call it, these triggers, okay? In the mind, you know, and they, the way they portrayed it was, was really like, wow, you get a full understanding of what is going on with a person who has this problem, you know. But like, but I do, I do believe that most people are uh, kind of Manchurian candidates to some extent. You have to be a Manchurian candidate to be a perp, you know. If you're you're somehow along going along with this sort of stuff. Especially if it contradicts with your religious beliefs or whatever, or you don't even know what your religious beliefs are, 
or you know any sort of moral issue that you're supposed to have and you continually act out certain things you're probably one of these maturing candidates like I said but it is kind of political because you're getting involved in things that are controversial um, relating to religion relating to somebody's race or whatever um, yeah there's a lot of those people out there so you know anyway I, I wanted to you know in my, my subconscious was telling me that these people are like hoovering you know I'm, I'm referring to the grand family I don't want anything to do with these people I have mentioned this before I don't want anything to do with these people I could not possibly like them at this point you know there was a time where I was like forgiving towards Joel um, not forgiving that I wanted to get back together with him because that's insane okay but I you know kind of felt compassion for him because how could he control who he is when he was raised to be this way from the get-go you know what I mean people are products of their environment you know so I kind of showed leniency, leniency towards him in that regard but you know the more I think about it these people are dangerous to me and they don't understand or care they don't have any moral compass they don't have any understanding of what's right and wrong I don't respect what they are and what they represent okay I, I would not have anything to do deliberately with somebody who lives that sort of lifestyle I just wouldn't okay um, you know and, and in cases where like you know um, you know let's like say for example I met a neighbor and you there was a nice exchange you know sometimes you meet neighbors and they're nice you know um, they go away for vacation they want you to look, make sure your their property is okay or whatever and you have these decent exchanges you know and I believe in being respectful to people let's just say for example there was a neighbor here who was involved with an incestuous relationship I would be kind to that person you know what I mean? They're not hurting anybody. It's kids or whatever. I, I, I'm able to be respectful to people, okay? And I would, if, if they were looking out for me, I in turn would look out for them. You know what I mean? That's that's cooperation. That's what you should do. you got to keep things moving, right? But as far as having any sort of relationship where I want these people as a part of my life to where I want to feel close to them, I respect them, I want to do things for them, I don't want anything to do with that kind of garbage. You know, I'm shocked that my family, if they are associated, my blood relations are associated with this, that makes me question their morals, okay? Especially if people know these people. Like, you know, in this community, people know who these people are. Excuse me, pick this up. They know who these people are. So, um, if my family is well aware of that, then they too, to me, are condoning incest. And I don't condone that. You know, I, I, it's something that I think should be condemned, you know. Um, and of course, it's consensual, and but I still don't want to be a part of it. So I don't, you know, and to think that I, that, you know, somebody would even come up with this idea, well, maybe she'll get back together with him. Like I said, you know, I'm better off by myself. I would not want to ever see Joel again. As a matter of fact, you know, he's another one of my, the people that if the purge was actually going to take place, he would be one of the first people that I would get to take off the face of this earth, okay? Obviously, you know, I, I have, you know, self, you know, self uh, morals and constraints and I would never do such a thing, okay? But in the back of my mind, if that was something, I look kind of silly right now, I, I mean, my, my hat and all that. But anyway, the... Um, the thing is, is that he's not somebody that I want anything to do with, okay? His mother would be another one that I would purge off the face of this earth, okay? And that would go for his family, his religious aunt, um, those kind of people I, I really don't want. And I don't even know his cousin, aunt, I don't even know exactly which relation she is. But she worked for the real estate company where I, um, I went to the house from. I, I don't know this woman, but I she probably had her little fingers in, in my stuff. I don't want anything to do with this person. I really don't. I, I, like I said, I would not even be able to recognize her if I saw her. All I know is Maria Gordon is Maria Gordon. They have no affiliation with the Grams. I don't want anything to do with these people. You couldn't make me want to have anything to do with these people. Okay? There is nothing that these people can do. Even if they have decided, hey, you know, we're going to change our life and, and be, you know, upstanding people. We're going to try to live up to our quote-unquote Christian principles. I would still take, well, you know, that's good for you. Let's just call it a day. 
I don't want anything to do with you. Right now in my life, I feel like it's important for me to make the decisions to purge people. You know what I mean? Whether, you know, it was something that was my, of my own doing or these people chose to walk out of my life, whatever. I'm grateful for it. I don't want that in my life, okay? I don't want to be, you know, associated with the Graham family. I have people, other people respect that kind of filth, then you go right ahead and respect it. Okay, I don't care if it's the new popular thing, if it's the rage, if this is the sort of practice that's been going on, you know, in this in this community for ages and, and everybody just thinks it's normal, okay? I know right from wrong, you know? And you're not gonna convince me that it's right when I know that it's wrong, okay? It goes against everything that I believe in, okay? So do what you want to do, but leave me the fuck out of it because I don't want anything to do with it. So, anyway, uh, that's the only video that I have for now, and the only shot thoughts that I have for now. Um, I might be doing more videos today. I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm feeling like, you know, there's a lot of things that I want to get out of myself, you know. i um, been talking a lot, and I think it's good for me because, like I said, this is a very traumatizing thing. Especially when you've addressed the, to these employers, like Steve Murray, Karen Johnson. You've said, get these people the fuck out of my life, okay? You cooperated with them you allowed these people to be in here that goes for my blood relations as well as the Wiles family um, and um, the the grounds okay uh, these people have no place in my life you know when it comes to Stephen you know I, I don't know Stephen very well okay I do believe that he has you know some sort of mental disability and maybe he might be being taken advantage of I do get that feeling sometimes, like he, he's probably being taken advantage of. Do I have more leniency towards Stephen Miles than I do Joel? Um, probably. I probably do. Does that mean that I want to marry this guy or now or get together with him? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that I would never want to be his friend. I don't know. I can't answer that. You know what I mean? If he walked up to me and said, you know what, let's talk about this and wanted to, you know, say, I am sorry you know, and whatever, maybe, okay, that would include his mom making the apology, but that still would not, would not want me, would, would still, I would still not want them to be a part of my employment connection, to have anything to do with that, okay, when it comes to that sort of stuff, hands off, all right, you do not ever have anything to do with me in that way, okay, if you arrange a job, and you tell me that I'm supposed to go to this job, like this is the job that I got for you, do you want to accept it? Then then I would consider it, maybe, okay? But it has to be done up front and no, that's bullshit behind the scenes, okay? Because what goes on, and, and there would have to be a mutual agreement, okay? This is my job, then I do my job. Don't tell me how I'm supposed to live, what I'm supposed to eat, how I'm supposed to look, whatever, no, okay? But aside from that, you know, I, I would never accept any sort of arrangement with that. Okay? I don't know what prompted him to behave the way that he did or why he, you know, wanted to jack away what's rightfully mine. Maybe because he feel, he, he helped give it to me and he wants to take it away. Whatever the case is, if he did it out of maliciousness, like maybe he felt, well, I don't, I'm kind of jealous or whatever. I don't want her to do that. And then j and took it away, um, then that's a problem. Okay? I don't know everything. Even though I'm psychic, I can't garner everything, okay? What motivated him, I, I don't know, okay? As far as his mom's concerned, oh, I don't really want to interact or deal with somebody who um, is jealous of me, you know? And, and that, that, that is the issue. I think this woman is jealous of me. Why would, why would somebody behave in this sort of manner unless, of course, they're jealous, okay? And I know the only thing that would make her jealous is because she feels as though I'm a threat to her relationship with her son, okay? Believe me, I don't want anything to do with those kind of strange, bizarre relationships, okay? And I'm very sorry that he actually is belongs to a family that's like that, okay? Because I never thought that. I always thought they were these good religious people. I may not have been a part of that religion, but I thought that they had these morals, you know? They were somewhere, you know, a good, clean little home and whatever, okay? I never saw them that way, okay? Um, but you know that doesn't mean I would be his friend. It would all depend. That would be that would that would depend on a lot of things. Okay, I don't hate him. Okay, but I don't certainly don't want to have any intermingling with him in in that in, in relating to my work. 
I, I would not want to do that. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Um, and yeah, I, I would also like to say that, you know, um, the, when it comes to the Lyles family, I, um, you know, I, um, I, I don't know exactly the difference between the bullshit that got started. Was it my family? Was it the Grams or was it them or whatever? I, if, if obviously people thought that I had a relationship with Stephen Lyles, okay, which is impossible to do. Um, but I don't know exactly how that actually came about, or you know, I'm, I'm obviously Facebook. But you know, I was per persecuted for, you know, basically. This is a weird part. I was persecuted, possibly, okay, what I think, persecuted for having a relationship with Stephen Lyles. All the while, while my I was married to my husband, who was being with his mom, which I think that's so weird. I don't even know how to even classify it, right? Um, so yeah, I was the one who's being persecuted. If I, let's just say that doesn't make any sense, okay? Whatever the case is, people will find any excuse to point a finger at, at um, someone that they they uh, would rather persecute then persecute the little white bitch that you know claims to be this religious holy roller right um yeah it, it's your racism check okay <laughs> it's basically what that's all about so anyway i'm gonna wrap up this video uh maybe be back with another one later i don't know but it feels good to just kind of play things by your day so wrap this one up i'll be back with another one later